Episode 117, Todd Waits. Good morrow and welcome to The Realm. I'm J.V. Hilliard. Today we have a very special guest, a man named Todd Waits, who owns his own audiobook company and is a voiceover actor for audiobooks. Now, I know many of us have heard various voiceover actors, whether they're doing cartoons or movie trailers, but Todd has a voice for books. So if you ever wonder what it's like to be a voiceover actor for audiobooks, this is the guy to listen to. So stay tuned here on The Realm today. So Todd, welcome to The Realm. Appreciate having you on the show today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So tell me, you know, I haven't had many guests on here that do what you do. I've had folks on here that are authors and artists and cinematographers even, but I've never had anybody on that does audiobooks. And not only are you a producer of audiobooks, but you're also a voiceover actor uh, that does them. And I know that you've got over almost 50 or thereabouts to uh, your credit. How do you get into that space? And just tell our viewers a little bit more about the industry. Okay, sure. As far as the audiobooks go, um, I started off doing some mystery and thrillers and honing my craft into that. It's not so much about changing your voice as it is changing the tone. Uh, I see. So you own Todd Waite's voice, you own your own company, and you're both a producer and a voice talent. Right. Do you prefer one over the other or are they both equally the same for you? As you can tell, I don't have the voice of God, the great voice. So if you've got a mystery, well, you can't be sitting there talking like this through the mystery. You got to slow down. You got to work with it. You got to lead the listener to what's coming up next. And like um, for nonfiction books, it's totally different because in a nonfiction, even though you're still telling a story, you're presenting facts for them to learn. You still got to make the information clear and enjoyable to listen to, but you have to be clean and precise with that. So you're an instructor or a professor as opposed to someone that's being dramatic. Exactly. And then, of course, you know, you've got, you know, like the cozy romances with those, you can be a little bit freer. And, you know, because it's not such a deep and dark story to be telling. You can be sitting there saying, you know, and he walked through and before he knew it, the pie had hit him in the face. That's how you got to change. And the job is really kind of easy because the author already tells you everything. So, like, if you're just reading a book for fun, you're picturing all this in your head anyway. As a follow up to that, Todd, do you ever have an author come back to you and say, I, I don't like the way this is narrated and we need to? course correct there? I mean, is it like a coaching session there or do you just, you have an instinctual feel for uh, how something needs to be spoken because you've already pre-read it? I've got a general idea. I've had authors provide me with a casting of, you know, list of their characters and a prominent actor or actress that they think would be a good fit for that role. So that will lead me to what they're looking for in that. I've had one time where an author came back and said, I really don't like this voice. Do you think you can change it a little bit? That, I, you know, it was no big deal to change that. But as far as the tone and everything, no, I haven't had anybody come back and say they wanted it different. Knowing what you do, Todd, do you prefer a certain book style, like, like, like thrillers, or do you find like the cozy romance is the way to go for you, or where are you most comfortable? I really enjoy doing nonfiction, but also mystery thrillers you know, where you can do more character work as opposed to just, you know, a straight read through the nonfiction. Is that the reason you like it the most? Because there's, there's more character depth uh, in it? Is that is that why you find it more comfortable? It's just more interesting to tell. It's like one of my uh, favorite examples about this. I'm telling a story about a child that was bullied growing up. And that's a whole lot different than telling a story about the political rhetoric during the 1896 presidential campaign, which very I different. Mean, it, it was an interesting book to read, but you're not really telling the story like you are in these mysteries, or I even did a zombie apocalypse series. So it gets fun to get through something like that. Have you ever turned down work because you felt that your voice wasn't right for it? Like if it was too graphic and violent or too sensual or was there ever a reason you said to an, a prospective client, hey, I just, I'm not, I'm not your guy for this? Yes, I have. The audition script sounded fun. I did a great job on the audition. They thought I did well. 
I got the rest of the book, read the manuscript. And the audition script was more third person. But then the latter part of the book was pretty much told from a female perspective. And while, you know, I can do that, I've done it in the past. I just think this particular book would have been better served with the female narrator. I understand. You mentioned before that you started with ACX, which is really helping indie authors. Do you like working with independent authors versus traditionally published authors, or is, does it really not matter to you? Sometimes it's a little easier working with an independent author because you get more one-on-one communication with them. If you're going through a publisher, you usually don't get to talk to the author. On the opposite side, it's easier to work with a publisher because, frankly, they know what they're doing. Sometimes independent authors have never had an audiobook made, so they've got certain misconceptions about the process. Like, oh, it's my book. I'm the director of this. You know, I'm the director of the audiobook. And I'm like, no, sorry. You're, <laughs> you're the writer of the words. I'm the audiobook guy. <laughs> no, that, that makes sense. I can appreciate that. <laughs> You know, and I tell authors too, you have this, you know, everything in your head, how these characters are going to sound. I can't match your head. What I can do is present my interpretation of your work. Now, I will try to get as close as you can, you know, as you can describe, but I'm never going to match what's in your head. So aspirationally, is there someone there that's sort of like the Todd Waits hero, uh, somebody that you try to be more like, or who's your favorite voiceover talent that that's out there now or perhaps uh, even when you were growing up? As far as audiobooks go, uh, I think my favorite is George Gridall. I mean, he's got the voice. I mean, he's not a character actor like some of the others are. He's just got a, a very unique style that I really enjoy. If we're going off on just, you know, um, other types of voice actors, there's Ryder. He does a lot of promos. He's just got the delivery from hell, you know. He's kind of like Don LaFontaine. The in a world, the guy that, you know, <laughs> that was him. He was just in a class by himself, but uh, Ryder's up there. One last question before we get to the lightning round. I mean, I know that you've just launched sort of a portal to publication for independent authors through Twin Tail Publishing. Are you looking to do movie trailers? Are you looking to do TV? What's next for Todd Waits? Well, yeah, Twin Tails Publishing, things are moving along great. Four audiobooks under contract with a couple more in the eaves going down there. So acting mainly as producer for that. So that's good to get going. Um, narration on uh, TV. That would be like my dream job. You know, somebody uh, like Mike Rowe for all of his stuff that he does. Uh, Robert Clotworthy for Oak Island and Ancient Aliens. That would be the ultimate job for me. I, I just think those guys are great and would really love to do something like that. Good. All right. Cool. So, all right, we're going to launch right into the lightning round that we do at the end of all of our realm shows. So if you're ready to go, I'm ready to fire them at you. Okay. So I know that both Seth MacFarlane and Mark Hamill are not only known for their acting, but they're also known for the voice acting. So Seth MacFarlane versus Mark Hamill, who wins and why? MacFarlane. He's just got a, a wider range. Fair enough. Fair enough. Houston Texans or Dallas Cowboys? Understanding where you're from. Texans. Oh, jeez. Well, at least you'll have fun on draft day. You'll go number one overall. That's what we're (laughs) hoping for. (laughs) All right. And uh, the last question I've got for you in the speed round is, who is your favorite character that has been voiced over and why? Favorite character? Robin Hobbs books, the Farseer trilogy, The Fool. I just think that character, The Fool, is just fantastically written, fantastically voiced in the books. A character like you've never seen in a book before. I'll let you go on that because you picked a good one. So okay. thank you, Todd, for being on the on the realm. We appreciate your time today. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. Man, what a voice that guy has. And as someone who uses a voice actor for his audiobooks, there's nothing better than somebody that has the right tone uh, and the right tenor being able to tell your story and bring it to life in a different medium. So big thanks for Todd to, for being on the show. And with that, speaking of audiobooks, I know my new audiobook is out on Audible among some other distribution channels as well, but I'm launching a, a new series on Kindle Vella, which is short stories and serials uh, called The Element of Time, which will come out in January of 2023. 
and it'll be another fantasy adventure set in the realm of Warminster, focused on a different area. So if you like the characters and you like the realm itself, you'll find the element of time launching in January, and I hope you download it. With that, thank you very much. This has been J.B. Hilliard. Thank you for visiting the realm, and may your gods go with you.